Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. These organ concerts stream live from Temple Square every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Mountain Time. Previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing on the Tabernacle Choir's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And you can find out more information about this concert series at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Our featured artist today is retired tabernacle organist Clay Christiansen, a repeat guest organist on Piping Up and a dear friend to everyone involved with this program. Clay will open the concert with his own arrangement of the hymn, Now Let Us Rejoice. This tune is based on an old English melody, but it was harmonized and turned into a hymn setting in this country by the mid-19th century songwriter and organist Henry Tucker.
We just heard Clay Christiansen playing his own vibrant celebratory arrangement of Now Let Us Rejoice. Now we turn to Camille Sassons, one of the most respected and influential French composers during the second half of the 19th century. Sassons hoped to release French music from the burden of trying to sound like Beethoven or Wagner. He aimed to foster a rediscovery and appreciation for what made French music sound French. Eventually, in 1894, Saint-Saëns returned to the organ, which of course had its own uniquely French traditions, and he penned three preludes and fugues. The German influence wasn't entirely erased in these works, and that wasn't his goal. The composer's ongoing reverence for Bach is on full display. Clay will now play the prelude and fugue in B major, opus 99, number two, by Camille Saint-Saëns, and he'll follow that with his own arrangement of the pioneer hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints.
Lullabies are, by design, some of the most peaceful and soothing music ever created. They are functional, more than entertaining. We sing lullabies to pacify a child who might be afraid of the dark, afraid of uncertainty. Through the lullaby, we try to assure them that everything will be okay, even if they're not so sure themselves. It's not surprising, then, that musicians and writers through the centuries have used sleep and the lullaby as representations of the more universal themes of life and death. The daily experience of sleeping and awaking helps us understand and gain confidence about death and new life, something we, as adults, might not be so sure about ourselves. The beautiful Welsh lullaby, Ar Hidinos, is perhaps better known in an English version, All Through the Night. The most familiar of several English versions, with words written in 1884 by Harold Bolton, moves through the standard themes of peaceful sleep and watchful guardians protecting the child. But this isn't really a translation as such of the original Welsh lyrics or at least it's a very free translation in the sense that all lullabies are going to say pretty much the same thing. A more accurate translation of this lullaby keeps the original Welsh reference to this larger symbolism that's missing in the familiar English words. In Welsh, the second verse speaks of old age being like a night, when adversity looms and the way forward seems dark and unclear. This is a lullaby for grown-ups. It's for those of us who, like a child at night time, feel a sense of uncertainty and apprehension about our futures, who carry heavy burdens into what can look like a dark night ahead, and who might feel some fear about facing that night alone. But the Welsh version of Ar Hidinos offers the hope of combining our weak lights to create a stronger light, to illuminate and even beautify the path forward and find our way together. The original words remind us of the comfort of community and congregation, a place to share our faith and the hope for an uplifting tomorrow as we help each other all through the night. Clay Christiansen will now play his own arrangement of the particularly affecting Welsh lullaby all through the night. Then, to close the program, we'll hear Max Rager's Toccata in D minor from 1901.
after hearing that magnificent Takata, it might be hard to believe that Max Rager's music was almost forgotten after his death. Not conventional enough for the traditionalists, nor progressive enough for the avant-garde, Rager's genius had to be rediscovered in later decades. There's a lesson in that, I'm sure. Thank you so much for joining us today for Piping Up with guest organist Clay Christiansen. You're always welcome to return for the live stream of these concerts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams on the Tabernacle Choir's website, Facebook page, and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.